tired of the boring, crowded, crap-filled streets of classical Rome. Come on down to Pompeii, greatest holiday destination in the Roman Empire. We've got a freaking mountain. We got hot tubs, brothels, streets clean and filled with crap. Hey, don't tell them about the volcano. The what? Uh... And we got a volcano! Pompeii, your holiday destination for a limited time. And by a limited time, I mean a very limited time. Pompeii, for the few of you who might not know, was a historical Roman holiday town inconveniently built near a volcano, which eventually did, you know, the volcano thing. Pretty stupid, am I right? Building your holiday destination near a volcano? Well, science back then was a motley mix of aqueducts and it's the gods, so I won't blame them. It was obviously unfortunate for the people who had to go through this catastrophe, and while I say this from my comfy position as a 21st century internet historian, Pompeii is a really interesting archaeological subject. When disaster struck that fateful day, Mount Vesuvius vomitorium to wave of rock and ash. Y y you get it? R Roman jokes. When the ash and rock buried the victims' bodies, it hardened, creating molds of their corpses in the stone. After the bodies had burned and then decomposed over centuries, it wasn't until the 1800s where Italian archaeologist Giuseppe Fiorelli developed a method to insert plaster into the molds, creating replicas of the victims. Fiorelli's meticulous care and techniques helped preserve the city, and his ingenious process gives us so much information about how the people had died in the eruption, what they were doing in their final moments, and sometimes what sort of clothing they wore. Giuseppe, you're a legend, buddy. It's creepy seeing these people in their final moments, from people holding their loved ones close in the end, to the opposite extreme, apparently a person was found getting it off one last time. Yeah, you do you, man. The eruption is estimated to be a hundred thousand times more powerful than the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in World War II. And while we have discovered 1,500 of these casts, the eruption in total killed up to 16,000 people in Pompeii, Herculaneum, and other towns and villages in the region. The first phase of the two-day eruption was the aforementioned Pumice Rain, lasting for around 18 hours. It allowed most of the inhabitants to escape. The total population of the city at the time was somewhere between 16,000 and 20,000. The rest of the eruption was defined by pyroclastic flows, which are fast-moving currents of hot gas and volcanic matter. And I'm not a scientist, but you can't really be chilling in your house when it's exaggeratedly the temperature of the sun. So a lot more people died. Pliny the Younger provided a first-hand account of the eruption on Mount Vesuvius from his position across the Bay of Naples at Mycenaeum, but he wrote it 25 years after the event. His uncle, Pliny the Elder, with whom he had a closer relationship died while attempting to rescue his friends who were stranded victims. As admiral of the fleet, Pliny the Elder had ordered ships of the Imperial Navy stationed at Mycenaeum to cross the bay to assist in evacuation attempts. Volcanologists, which sounds like the coolest freaking job in the world, have recognized the importance of Pliny the Younger's account of the eruption by calling similar events Plinian. To continue this trend of naming traumatic events after those who experienced them, I hereby deem any time you're hit in the face with a golf club on your sixth birthday, it should be called a muzzy moment. When I went to Pompeii, I knew about the tragedy of this story and I expected to see a solemn place, one that was haunted by thousands of people who died thousands of years ago. But when I expected to learn about their deaths, I was surprised to learn so much about Roman life in the ruined city. We entered their bathhouses, storehouses, and house houses. We walked down their streets and alleys and we saw their graffiti, which was sort of like Roman Twitter back then. Sir, can you please stop writing on the walls? Pompeii brothel, five out of five stars, hashtag Tiberius did the 69. Take him away. We even learned about the importance of Roman engineering through the lesson that Pompeii was not able to have an underground sewer system like other Roman cities due to the bedrock underneath, resulting in the streets being filled with shit. Poop. Canals of poop. So much poop that there had to be step zones at intersections so people didn't have to cross the street in the poop. And imagine if a cart splashed by while you were on the sidewalk. Ugh. Well shit, you mean we can't dig our well for shit here? No, well we can't dig a well well for our shit for shit here. Well no shit, actually lots of shit. I was so amazed to actually be in this place. My first experience learning about history was this book that I got when I was really little about the Roman Empire. In it, a boy travels back in time to see the Romans and their way of life. Sure, at the end it gives a brief summary of the actual history, and it mentions Pompeii. But as a little kid, I thought it was so cool to imagine being a Roman. And when I finally went to Pompeii on a school trip, 
trip. It was amazing. I actually felt like I was in the book and I had traveled back in time. I felt like I was in a Roman city. Well, except for the colors, the noise, the poop, the decoration, the bloodthirsty entertainment we watched before Netflix, and especially the people. This site is so conflicting because these ruins are haunted by death and despair, but the archaeological value of Pompeii cannot be questioned. The worst happened to these people, and through their tragic deaths, we get an important glimpse into the Romans' mysterious lives. Seeing the lush, green, populated lands surrounding Pompeii changed my mindset of the whole thing. There was life here again. Well, there had been for a really long time, but in my head I expected to see a desolate, apocalyptic wasteland haunted by an ancient tragedy. But as our bus drove on, I saw stores and parks and lots and lots of house houses with plumbing. I was mesmerized by human perseverance. Millions of people live in the shadow of that still very active volcano. Our bus driver thought it'd be funny to play the Bastille songs lyrics that I once thought were really cheesy. But if you close your eyes, does it almost feel like nothing changed at all? But if you close your eyes, Pompeii. <laughs>